Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at the LCD 1602 display. Now, this is a two line, 16 characters per line LCD display. It's been around for a while. It uses the Hitachi HD 44780 display driver IC. And you can get them online, they're pretty common. They'll cost around five dollars, so they're pretty inexpensive. And this one has the I squared C piggyback board, so you only need four wires uh, to drive this uh, LCD display. And we'll be using the Scamp 3 board to drive the display. Now the display runs in five volts, and the microcontroller we're using, the PIC microcontroller on the Scamp 3 board, is 3.3 volts, and it's not five volt tolerant. So we have to do a little modification. We have to do a little hack on the display to make it compatible. So on the back of the of the board, you can see the I squared C piggyback board. Now there's two pull-up resistors, uh, 4.7k ohms. They're pulled up to 5 volts, and we have to remove them. So those are resistors R8 and R9. You can see I removed the two resistors, and we'll be using the pull-up resistors on the Scamp 3 board to 3.3 volts. Now also there's another problem. This IC right here is the GPIO expander IC, which drives these 16 LEDs has an I squared C address of uh, hex 27 same as the display so there'll be a conflict so we have to change the address of the of the display so on the back here you can see there's jumpers for A0, A1 and A2 so I jumpered A2 uh, with a solder jumper and so now this uh, display board will have a hex address of hex 23 so that's what we have to do to make it compatible and we write some code and then we could drive the display with a SCAMP 3 board Okay, here's a close-up of the I2C piggyback board on the back of the LCD1602 display. Now this one has not been modified, so we can see the two resistors, R8 and R9. They have to be removed because they're pulled up to 5 volts, and they're hooked up to the SCL, SDA lines. So there'll be 5 volts on those two lines, so if you remove those two resistors, we'll be using the pull-up resistors on the SCAMP3 board, which are pulled up to 3.3 volts, so it'll be compatible. Now if you do not want to move those two resistors, you could actually get a voltage converter board that will convert 5 volts to 3.3 volts and 3 volts to 5 volts and we can put that in between uh, the microcontroller and display. But in this case we're going to do a little hack. We're going to remove those two resistors and then to change the address, there's the three address pins. You can see A0, A1, A2 jumpers. So I'm jumpering A2, this one right here. So it will make this I2C uh, piggyback board address hex 2.3. Okay, here's the four pins on the I2C piggyback board that we use to connect up to the SCAMP3 board. So we have ground, it's a common ground. We have VCC, that's 5 volts. Then we have the SDA, that's a data line. SCL, that's a clock line. Those two are the I2C bus. So we hook up these four lines to the SCAMP3 board, and then we could drive the LCD1602 display. Okay, after the modification of the I2C piggyback board, the next step is to hook it up to the SCAMP3 board, and we'll run I squared C scanner and see if we can actually pick up I squared C piggyback board, the new address of hex 23. So there's only four wires that hook up the display to the scan 3 board. There's VCC and ground, and then there's the two I squared C bus uh, pins, which is SDA and SCL. So we're going to get five volts off the V in pin, which you can see here. It's V in pin is five volts. It's getting the five volts right from the USB connector. So we'll hook that up to the VCC on the on the display, and then there's ground, common ground. Then there's the two I squared C buses, SDA and SCL. So we hook them up, the four lines. We'll run modules, which is an I squared C scanner, and we'll see if we can pick up a hex 23 address, which is the I squared C piggyback board. Okay, I have TerraTerm up and running on my computer, which is connected to my SCAMP3 board through the USB port, which is powering the SCAMP3 board and also powering my LCD1602 display, which draws about 23 milliamps. So next we have to check the I squared C address of the piggyback board which we modified. So we're going to run an I squared C scanner and we'll see if we can pick up hex 23. So I'll hit enter and I get an OK prompt so I'm talking to the SCAMP3 board. So we'll run the I squared C scanner and we'll type modules. So there it is, it's picking up three addresses. Now hex 27, that's the GPIO expander chip which is driving the 16 LEDs on board the SCAMP3 board. Hex 48 is the temperature sensor on board the SCAMP3 board. And there's Hex 23. So that's our, that's our piggyback board, which we modified. So we're getting a Hex 23. So now we can start writing code for the LCD1602 display. Okay, next, 
I'm going to demonstrate some code which I've written on the SCAMP3 board, written in Flashforth, to control the LCD1602 display. So I made it interactive, so I have it mapped to my keyboard, so whatever I type on my keyboard, it's going to come up on the LCD1602 display. So I type some keys, and it comes up on the display. When I come to the end of the second row, it's going to go up to the top row, row number one, and I keep on going. When it comes up to the end of the first row, it's going to jump down to the second row. And if I use my, my backup key, it, it actually deletes. My space key, I can erase everything and just add more text. So it's pretty handy for uh, setting up text. If you're having a project, you can see if everything fits properly. So that's my first program. And the second program, we're actually going to use the temperature sensor on the SCAMP 3 board and we'll display it on the LCD1602 display. Okay, my next code example is to read the temperature sensor on board the SCAMP3 board and to display that temperature on the display. So I have a heat gun and I have some cold spray so I'll, I'll heat up the chip first and we'll watch the display. Watch it go up. And I'll get my cold spray and I can take it down pretty quick. And slowly she's coming back up. So that's my second code example how we could read the temperature sensor and display it on the display. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAMP3 board. And it's written in Flashforth. So the first word we're going to look at is i2c.write. Now this will write a byte over the I2C bus to the display. So all we have to do is give it a byte value and the address, then I2C write, and it will send that byte to that address. So we start out with a start, and then we, we do a write of the address, and then we do a send of the byte, and then we do a stop. Now an example of this, we'll take A5 as our byte, address is hex 23, that's the address of our display, then I2C write. So at the OK prompt, if I type this and hit, hit enter, it will send the value A5, hex A5, to address hex 23. And you can see on the scope, there's a write function sending to address hex 23, and the byte value is hex A5. Now if I send another byte value, in this case hex 5A, to address hex 23, and do I2C write, now you see it on the scope. It's a write function uh, sending to address hex 23 the value byte hex 5a. Now the next word is called 2i2c. So now we're making a word out of out of uh, uh, this word. We're using this word as a building block. Now address is hex 23. That's the address of our display. So I made a constant called addr. So anywhere in code where we have addr address, it's going to substitute hex 23. So down here, we don't have to type the address anymore. We just have to type a byte value, and then 2i2c. And if we, if we type that at the OK prompt, hit Enter, we'll send the byte A5 over the I2C bus to address hex 23, which is our display. OK, next, we are going to have a look at two more fourth words. Now, there's two types of data that we send to the display. There's text data, where we use 2LCD, and there's command data, where we use 2Command. Now commands are homing the cursor, cursor left, cursor right, clear to display. That's where we use to command. And if we want to send text to the screen, we apply a, a NASCII character at the OK prompt, and then we type 2LCD, and that will actually send that character to the display. So when it sends that character, we're using 4-bit mode. So it takes the character, and then it takes the four, first four bits, and it sends the first four bits. Then it sends the, the last four bits, because we're in 4-bit mode. And does that also for the command. There's the first four bits and our second four bits. Now if you look at the display, there's a pin uh, labeled pin 4. That's our RS. That's our register select. So when, the, when that pin is high, we're sending data. So we're sending to LCD. And if that pin is low, then we're sending commands. So that's how we tell the difference between commands and text is by pin 4 if it's either high or low. Okay, the setup shown here it takes a lot of GPIO from the microcontroller. So to reduce the count on the GPIO pins, we could, we could use the 4-bit mode. 
Now in 4-bit mode, we don't use D0 to D3 on the data bus. So to send the character H, we would do it in two steps. First of all, we would send a 4, a binary 4, 0, 1, 0, 0, and put that into the high nibble of the data bus, and then pulse pin E with a positive going pulse. Then we would send 8, 1, 0, 0, 0, and put that into the high nibble, and then pulse pin 6. So it takes two steps to send one character, but we gain four GPIO pins. Now when the display first powers up, it's in 8-bit mode and it's configured for one line. So we have to configure it for 4-bit mode in two lines. So we do that with the word lcd.init. So here we set it for 4 bits, for two lines, 5 by 7 pixels, home the cursor and clear the screen. So that's the first thing we run is lcd.init. And then we're going to run two more words called to display and to console. Now this is a redirection. Now when we run to display, all fourth words that normally sent text to the computer screen will now send it to the display. And when we go to console, it'll revert it back to the screen again. Next, I made some commands, some display commands. They're all in capital letters. So here's clear screen home cursor. Here's move cursor one, one to the left. Here's move, move the cursor one to the right. Home cursor line one, so that'd be line one to the very left. Home cursor line two, that'd be the second line to the very left. And then all the rest, all the way down to shift display right. Next word is called set cursor. Now this is very powerful. You'll be using this a lot. We give it a line number, either line number one or two, and a column number from zero to 15 and we'll put that cursor in that location on the on the display and then from there you could write text so that's very powerful set cursor so here's my two words that I demonstrated so here's lcd.type so when we run that we just type on our keyboard and whatever we type on the keyboard will come onto the display like I showed in the very beginning of the clip and here's my temperature show.temp so this will read the temperature I see on board the SCAMP 3 board and display it so first of all, we do a carriage return for a new line. We initialize the, the display. We clear the, the cursor, make it invisible. Now we do redirection to display. Now all words that normally send text to the computer screen will send it to the display. So the first thing I do, I home the cursor to line one. Then I print temp, then a space. Now I read the temperature from the temperature sensor. And it's going to give us an integer and a fractional. So I'm going to drop the fractional. And I'm going to print the integer value of, of the temperature. And then I'm going to print the word degrees. And that's going to go into a loop. It's going to continuously read the temperature until we hit any key on the keyboard. And it will come out of this and then we'll go back to the console. Now we could actually get into the fourth operating system. So that's our main word called show temp. So you could try that out. Uh, we could try out those two words, show.temp and lcd.type. So that's the first two words you could, you could uh, you could try out when you load this code onto the SCAMP3 board. Now when you first power up the display, it's going to look like this. You can see it's showing one line, so it's set for one line, and it's set for 8-bit mode. So as soon as you run the program show temp or LCD type, it'll actually reconfigure it, and we'll get 4-bit mode with two lines. Now make sure that you have your intensity turned up. On the back there's a pot right here. Turn it up so you actually can see uh, the backlight, because if it's turned right down, uh, you might think it's not working, but it's just your backlight is turned off. So make sure your, your backlight is on. Then run those uh, run those two words, either uh, show temp or LCD type, and then you can play around with the LCD 1602 display. Okay, my display is powered up. I home the cursor and I cleared the screen. And I have a little program running that takes the ASCII key press data from the keyboard and sends it to the display. So if I hit any key, hitting some numbers hit some letters, and I can backspace. Now when I come to the end of the first line, it'll go to the second line. And when I come to the end of the second line, it'll go to the first line. So you can see here I can send any ASCII code that my keyboard is capable of sending, and I can send it to the screen for testing. So that's how I control my display interactively. So next we'll look at some screen commands. So I'll send a shift display right. You can see the display shifting to the right. And I can go left. I can home the cursor to line one. 
I can hold the cursor to line 2. I can blink the cursor. There's the cursor blinking. I can turn it off. So there's an example of some commands that we can send to the screen through the keyboard. Okay, so that was my little tutorial on how to interface an LCD 1602 display to the SCAMP3 board and how to do it in fourth. So in fourth, we're actually making our own computer language. So it's a language for running a display. So now you can take all those words that you saw in the code and you could actually build upon them and come up with your own uh, computer language for your own projects. So I hope this uh, could help you guys out how to hook up a LCD display to a microcontroller.